Ceratopsians, with a wide variety of head shapes and wide distribution, are well known for their ornamentations and their well-recognised impressiveness. Although some members, while not having such elaborate headgear, more than make up for this in other ways, one of which being the genus known as Udanoceratops, which was quite the impressive animal as will be discussed. Described in 1992 by paleontologist Sergei Kurzanov from the Chodocha Formation, which dates back to the companion stage of the late Cretaceous of Mongolia from about 75 to 71 million years ago. Their name was derived from the locality where they were found, Udan Ser, and the Greek Ceres meaning horn and Ops meaning face. The holotype consists of a large and complete skull, alongside sparse body remains including vertebrae. Scaled up similarly to other Leptoceratopsians, the clades to which they belong, which have pretty large heads for their body size, it was found that they were determined to be around 4 meters in length and 350 to 750 kilograms in estimated weight, making them among the largest, if not the largest, of the non-ceratopsid ceratopsians, comparable in mass to living animals like moose and polar bears. Their skulls are disproportionately massive at 60 centimeters in length, with them being very deep and lacking the peg-like premaxillary teeth seen in animals like protoceratops, being closest in relation to North American taxa like leptoceratops and prenoceratops. Said skulls also possess a very short frill with no horns present over their eyes and nose, and with their giant beaks, resemble giant parrots in appearance, with said shearing jaws likely giving them a very powerful and deadly bite, which would help them not only in dispatching hardy plants, but giving them a very potent weapon against predators, given how immense said jaws were. After snipping off plant material, they could then use their rear cheek teeth to further break down the material for easy digestion. Regarding the rest of their known anatomy, Paleontologist Viktor Tereshenko argues in 2008 that Sedanoceratops could be facultatively aquatic, assuming that the long neural spines on the caudal vertebrae were taken to be adaptations to regular swimming, and said increased spine length allowed them to have increased propulsion capabilities. He also notices that the apparent sculling function of the tail possessed supposed broad transverse processes throughout the caudal region further than would be expected in most other animals, giving it a robust musculature for much of their length. These conclusions, though, are almost certainly erroneous, however, and the paper itself is quite flawed, with said transverse processes actually being quite small and short in Odanoceratops, smaller than those seen in Cetacosaurs and Ceratopsids, also not extending a long way down the tail. Tereshenko, while referring to the tail as being very high and compressed laterally, does not reconstruct or refer to the tail's width, and brings up vague comparisons of cross-section Ceratopsids and alligator and salamander tails to draw a comparison which more or less just shows similarities which would be seen in any tetrapod with a tail. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume that Adanoceratops and frankly most Ceratopsians were no more aquatic than say wild pigs, which appear similar both in physical appearance and in each. The environments they lived in also consisted mostly of semi-desert sediments that consisted mostly of sand dunes, so the habitat for said lifestyle was also lacking. A potential role in either fat storage or potentially display with them perhaps having quill-like bristles propped up to appear more visible on said higher tails like Cetacosaurus could also be a possibility, although more work needs to be done on this, and what it could mean for them and their anatomy. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.